Hello everybody. Oh, out here in the garage tinkering. Just after 11 o'clock. Thought I'd do a bit of a different video here. A little bit of a teardown video. This here is a Peerless 600 series transaxle. Probably my favorite lawn tractor transaxle. I've got a few of them. A couple that I run in tractors here. This one was actually in I knew a rat rod tractor that I just made a video of. I have a drive shaft setup going on, so it sits up like this here, and the drive shaft comes from the pinion shaft like that. And it, uh, this transaxle here was in good shape. I had been running it for a little bit, and then I don't know if you can see, but yep, that pinion shaft just froze right up. <laughs> The axles are fine. It's just fine everything. It's just that you can see there's a ball bearing here. Which is good, but underneath that, the lower portion of the pinion shaft, there is a steel bushing about that long. And uh, yeah, steel on steel contact at, oh, I don't know, 4,000 RPM. That's not going to last very long. Because I have this, that rat rod tractor is geared fairly high to be fast so that shaft is spinning very very fast and even though I had the oil level filled all the way up here of course it was like this I had it filled all the way up here regardless it still froze up I it's all back together now that I had a different I had a spare 600 and I upgraded I pressed the uh, bushing out of the bottom and I installed a needle bearing and I put, the, the other one had a ball bearing here as well. And I installed a second ball bearing on top of that in place of the seal. So now the other one is extremely durable. Well, in theory. I've been running it for a while now and it seems to be okay. But this one here, I kind of want to tear it apart and just see how bad the shaft is. If the shaft is marred up and just really screwed, then whatever, no big deal. But if it's okay and I can just unstick it and take the, bear, uh, the bushing out, Maybe I'll be able to save this transaxle. Okay. Everything set up here. So, unlike most <clears throat> vertical shaft transaxles, this here splits horizontally like old garden tractor transaxles. So, of course, the bolts go in like this here. So, we'll just take and break those loose. Okay, we've got our locked in the vise here. A couple things. First of all, I drained a little more oil out of here and I cleaned up my mess. <laughs> yeah, always check you have the oil drained before you get screwing around too much. Anyway, a couple things before I tear it apart. Make sure we have a light here. I already have the shifter removed because I had to use it in the other transaxle, but make sure it's in neutral. When it's in neutral, the shift works to line up okay, perfectly like that. Just makes it easier for this assembly. And another thing, these axle sleeves here and one here, you're actually supposed to remove those completely like unbolt them and slide them off. I never do. I've taken a few of them apart. I think it's mostly just so you don't damage the needle bearing and the seal and everything in here. But if you're careful, it's no big deal really. And the lower one serves as a good spot to clamp it in the vise. So I kind of tend to leave those on. And as long as you're careful, you don't hurt anything. So it's not really a big deal. Anyway, let's get to tearing it down. Oh, I just noticed I actually completely forgot a bolt. So that's another thing. Don't forget a bolt. Okay, so what we're going to do, I can tell this actually has been a part once before because you can see no gasket. There's just silicone and all the bolts come out with silicone on them. So maybe it won't come apart too bad. We'll see. As I said, neutral. Now between these transaxle halves, there's actually a, a half inch, about half inch thick plate. So you actually got to separate two different gasket surfaces. I always just think it's all right to take 
this little scraper, one of these little scrapers, and a hammer, and just go in between. Try and break it loose. As we can see, this one is already going to be a little stubborn. Yeah, you listen for that sound change, and you know you've got it. You can see there's the upper case half. Got my light. You can see that uh, silicone we were talking about. You can see the needle bearing in here. That's for the main shaft, not the counter shaft. In there, there's a bushing for the axle and needle bearing, which is bad. The axle. Uh, that all looks pretty clean, I guess. And you can see there's that silicone. I guess I already said that. <laughs> here. That shaft actually moved a bit on me. This is your differential. It's the same differential that they use in the 800s with the nice, heavy cast iron carrier. Very good setup. So, next we'll try and. Sometimes this works if you've got a nice clean axle, sometimes it doesn't. Remove the whole differential assembly. Oh. Perfect. You see one axle, very long and very short pretty hard to mix those up <laughs> so we'll set that down over here just clean up a little bit of the oil that's on top of here where the shift shafts come through and again we'll separate this gasket mating surface where this plate is This one is apparently just as stubborn. You can see that's the plate that goes in the middle. Nothing special about that. There's a little bushing here. I believe that's for the reverse idler shaft. And two holes. That's where the shift shafts poke through. So, I'm not sure how many of you folks on the internet have actually seen the internal workings of a 600. But there don't seem to be many videos on YouTube, so I'll show you, I suppose. Okay, let's take a little look, see. Oh, geez. A little bit of wear. There is a beveled edge on those, so it's partially natural, but I can see just a little bit of unnatural marks on there. First side of the shaft seems kind of loose, maybe. Ooh. Some definite. Uh, Bad edge on the edge of that uh, spline counter shaft hub. I suppose it's been rubbing on the inside of that bushing head. You can see just an equally bad edge on there. So I'm, may I'm thinking maybe the end play was too tight. Um, there's your shift shafts. The shifter goes in there and moves them up and down. There's your differential input gear I guess that's the reverse idler and the spacer on top oh I just noticed here you can see maybe you can't glare that key the key is the gear to that hub this is an earlier 600 the later ones actually had splines here which was more reliable because these keyed ones under certain applications I guess were known to shear the key and then the tractor would not move at all because that gear would just spin on the shaft and wreck stuff. So maybe it was kind of a good thing I ended up taking this trans out because uh, the one I put in had the spline hub, so it's a little more reliable. And you can, like we were saying, that wear on there is something to note. Anyhow, I'll set you back up here and we'll start taking our guts out of it. Okay, I'll do you. I'll do my best to uh, show you the pieces as I take them out and explain a little bit. I also try not to get in the way of the camera too much, but bear with me. So first, 
we can actually start to disassemble the counter shaft or remove it. I'll take the, oh well, actually we'll take the reverse idler setup out first. So there's a spacer here and the idler gear. See a little wear on there. It's no, nothing out of the ordinary. We'll just put it in the way that it came out. And the shaft. You can see that end was the one that went into the casting, so we'll drop it down here the way it came out so we can assemble it correctly again. Essential input gear out. Actually, yes, we'll start with the shift cluster assembly. Before I remove the shafts are real sticky. So just wiggle them and they should come out. Okay, the brake shaft came out as well. That's no big deal. Here you can kind of hard to keep it together. But there's the, oh, where are we? Here we are. The shift cluster assembly two gears here and this shaft this is actually this sticks out of the transaxle this is actually your brake shaft so your brake rotor would slide on it doesn't usually come out that easy but that one slid right out so I guess that's all right we will though drop on the floor we will put that back in just for time being I can show you right here. Put that back together. Now we can remove the counter shaft. Mm hmm. Actually, some rust on those spacers. I'm kind of surprised by that. Oh, also, always. Pay attention to shims and where they went. This shim was on the back of here. So I will put it down that way so I can remember where it goes. So yeah, being that this one is the keyed version of the counter shaft that actually stayed together, on the newer splined version, you can pull these gears off in the spacers, no problem. But pay attention because there is a beveled edge on one edge. It's supposed to face down. And if you can see, if I get in the light here a little better, maybe not. One of these spacers is actually longer than the other. This one here is longer, so you pay attention to that. If you have the version that's splined, when you take it apart, just pay attention to which spacers are which, and you shouldn't have any problems. Whoop, I bumped you. There. Anyway. Now, I'll, I guess I'll show you what we're left with here. Okay, so we got the case half here. I took the brake shaft out as well. You can see in here, there's a piece of snap ring. And you'll notice that my pinion gear has no snap ring. There's no snap ring on the shaft. No snap ring at all. So apparently I want to me that got broken off. I don't see any big chunks of other stuff. You can sort of see that. The bad edge on there that they must have silicone that and it had it way too tight because just marks on everything can't tell if there's a crack in there i don't know if you can see that on camera i don't think it's a crack anyhow i think the end plate was too tight because there's bad edges on stuff even on this here oh yeah so here's what we're left with outside there's the reverse idler the shift cluster, the counter shaft, and that gear that uh, gears the main shaft to the differential. So it's kind of a different setup if you're used to uh, other transaxles that use shift forks and things. Yeah, a little oh, I'm knocking stuff over. Sliding gears here. It is essentially a sliding gear transaxle. You can see you got your shift shafts with the shift forks. Here. So a sliding hub which engages 
that gear there that gear actually just is a separate thing and it uh that hub slides down and essentially keys this gear to the input bevel gear and it's sort of hard to explain without having it all together and i don't think i can get the camera in there very good but essentially this slides up and down and in one position it'll lock this i'll lock everything together and give you first and then it moves up into a position where it can be neutral it moves up even more to go in second and whatnot and then third is here and third i think believe this gear and this gear also key together sorry mesh together with this reverse idler and that gives you reverse so two gears are essentially the same size i believe maybe that one's a little bigger probably so those mesh together in reverse using this idler which goes right here and that gives you a reverse this here i notice this is what this is third I, had, I did have an issue with this transaxle not wanting to go into third very easily, and I noticed it really is hard to slide on there. Like I'm putting, there, it finally went. That should be a lot easier than that. Like that should slide, there it's kind of going now, but a couple times here I had to do that. So I wonder if there's some galling on these, uh, on the shaft here, and maybe it's, that's why it's not working so well. You can see some, I think that's wear right there where the shifter rod has been coming down so this transaxle has seen some use i'm assuming i don't never seen that on any of the other transaxles that tore apart so it's kind of interesting now you can see i got vice grips on here and this oh it turned a little bit but it starts to lock up i believe i need maybe i can get it out see if i can get this stuff out aha okay and then there should be two washers and a thrust bearing two shims i should say yep there's shim thrust bearing shim they the thrust bearing goes in between and that goes between this gear and the case and you can see there's a needle bearing in there and the pinion gear there's also the same idea with the two shims a thrust bearing there should be another shim yep sorry for the shoddy camera work and basically now what we're left with is basically the empty case a bit of metal shavings in the corner there and our c's pinion shaft and you can just see that bushing sticking through there that is the problem that steel on steel contact is what killed this transaxle and yeah that's Usually your pinion shaft will hold up a pair of vice grips. That's usually not good. So I'm going to do some tinkering here. See if I can even get that shaft out because it might be a real bugger to get it out. We'll have to see. I'll get back to you when we make some progress. Okay, hello everybody again. Kind of a little follow up here, I guess. Uh, I quit messing with this last night because I was getting late and it was kind of frustrating. So, But I ended up getting the pinion shaft out this morning. You see, yeah, there's a bad spot there. Another one right there. That actually looks like metal transfer to come off the bushing there, so that's not good. I don't know if I can get you in here or not, but not really. There's uh, quite a bit of bad spots on the uh, bushing too, which I expected because it was froze up, so you can you are catching a ridge about halfway down. Yeah, right there is an awful ridge. So yeah. So if I were to put this back together and try and use it, I would probably try and get a new one of these. I'm sure someone could turn that off. Like put it in the lathe and turn that bad stuff off. But, well, I had to beat on the end of it to get it out too. So maybe I wreck something else in the process. Who knows? And then press this out and use needle bearings. Like I did with the other one, but... Well, also, I noticed this horrible groove in the axle here. I never noticed that last night. So that's not good either. So if I were to use that, I would probably have to put a new axle in her. So probably just going to take it, or probably just going to put it back together and use it for parts. Leave the pinion shaft out, obviously, and just keep it as a parts transaxle. So no biggie.
at least I got my other one back in the rat run, so we're all good on that front, really. So, anyway, thought I'd make a little adventure out of this here, so thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.